Fox, what was your overall impression? Uh, <laughs> mixed, really. Um, I, I'm, very, uh, I'm very proud of Scotland for, for doing the Gender Identification Act because I think that is, uh, that's long needed. And it's a debate that has to happen. I'm, I do question the 16 thing, but that's my own personal feeling. Mm -hmm. But I do feel we need to address that, and I think that's absolutely right. As far as, um, as, far as the economy is concerned, well, of course it's shrunk because we are no longer that particular island that we have been. And so we've lost that power, and therefore we have to rethink who we are. And this is, I think this is really the beginning of a whole process of rethinking who we are. Uh, and I think since the passing of, uh, the, uh, you know, our wonderful late Queen, I think we've had to consider it, we've had to consider the monarchy, and we're seeing it in relationship to what's been going on in the book Spare, mm -hmm. the Harry situation. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of massive rethinking that needs to be done. And as part of that rethinking, a lot of people are thinking about identity, and on that question of the, the, the gender base debate, it's been very, very controversial in Scotland. There's been a lot of abuse flying around, not least at J.K. Rowling, who has sort of become a, a leader for a particular group of, of, no. of people who've got real concerns. What do you make of the way that she has been treated? I think I don't like the way she's been treated, actually. I think she's entitled to her opinion. She's entitled to say what she feels. As a woman, she's very much entitled to say what she feels about her own body. And there's nobody better to say that as, as a woman. So I, I, I do feel that people have been a bit high and mighty about their um, attitude towards J.K. Rowling, quite mm. frankly. It's been, Caroline, very fraught in Scotland and it is likely that there's you know going to be a lot more tense discussions around this whole issue also in Westminster too and we know as we were discussing with Keir Starmer that the government in Westminster is considering blocking the change of law that's been had in Scotland. Do you think they should block it because it would be the first time that a government at Westminster has ever stopped a law being changed in Scotland like that? Well, look, um, and I chair a select committee which recommended a raft of proposals which are broadly in line mm -hmm. with what the Scottish Government has done. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, I think it would be grossly hypocritical of me to say, yes, the government should block it. Mm -hmm. But there are real legal and constitutional implications of this. I think using Section 35 of the Scotland Act mm -hmm on this particular issue. Just to slam the brakes on. It absolutely looks, um, looks like an odd issue to pick your constitutional fight over. I think it's really important to reflect that whilst all sorts of toxic allegations are thrown around in this debate, from turf uh, used as a term of abuse on one to some really quite aggressive tactics uh, from those who are very passionately committed mm. to additional trans rights on the other, the vast majority of people are right in the middle and they want to see trans people treated with respect. They also want to make sure, as I do, mm -hmm. that women's rights are absolutely upheld and that there are safe spaces uh, for single sex but there's protections some people like in refugees. Your party. Maybe some people in the government actually seem quite happy to stir this up. I mean, are you uncomfortable about it? Oh, I'm very uncomfortable about uh, gender wars. I'm very uncomfortable about having some sort of culture war about this. I think what is absolutely imperative is that we treat everybody with respect and we try to have a debate around gender identification that recognises the reality. There are people who uh, are born in the wrong body who work incredibly hard their entire lifetime to get the recognition for the person that they are and my committee has taken private evidence from individuals from trans people and listening to their struggles listening to the discrimination and the abuse that they have faced i absolutely believe we have to make the process simpler and kinder um but i i really fear the use of this as some sort of woke culture war mm -hmm. to sow division and to make life harder on both sides of the argument. And yes or no, do you think your party, some people in your party are trying to use it as a, as a, as a sort of battering ram in a debate? I think that's very obvious. Absolutely, yes. OK. Howard Davis, I was interested there to hear Keir Starmer not quite say that he's going to junk the uh, promise to abolish tuition fees, but I think his direction of travel is pretty clear. What are the economics of that? I mean, is it just too expensive to do right now in, if you look at the state of public spending? Well, it depends if you're going to replace the income for the universities uh, or not. Mm. What is quite interesting is that this has been unchanged now for 12 years. Mm. During that time, we've had inflation averaging about 2 or 3%, plus then a year of 10%. So actually, the amount the universities are getting has fallen very sharply in real terms without the government doing anything, if you like. So there has been a change in policy by this government already. But if you were to remove 
all of that tuition fee mm -hmm. then and replace it all with government spending, that would be very difficult to afford given the fiscal profile. So I think I can understand why he's a bit cautious now about saying I'm going to can all this because since the trust Quateng adventure and what we realised that there were some constraints on how much the government could mm -hmm. borrow, spending all that money is looking hard. OK, well, they might be gone, but they've certainly got a legacy in how it's changed <laughs> the political debate. Um, Brian Cox, you said there that you were proud of how Scotland has um, changed the law on gender recognition. As somebody who's committed to the independence movement. It was very interesting what you were saying earlier about having a federalised UK. Um, are you frustrated that Nicola Sturgeon may be going back on her promise to use the general I election as a referendum? Been, we, you know, you're a fellow Scot, so you understand the word canny. I do understand the word canny. And I think she's being very canny, and I think she's in a, she should be canny, given the situation, and it's a hot potato. It's mm. been a, you know, a hot potato for a long time, as gender identification is. So I think she's, I think she's following the right course. Uh, if you consider what happened in... Uh, well, what happened in the, the Catalan uh, mm -hmm. referendum. In which Spain, were, they, yeah. a, a part it, of the country wanted And it, and it was an illegal referendum, mm -hmm. and they suffered as a result. Mm -hmm. So she has to be very, very careful that we are doing it the right way. But there's real frustration among some SNP members and supporters. You know, she had this sort of uh, smiley meeting with Rishi Sunak this week, and then she's talked about having the general election as a de facto referendum on independence, but actually now that might be the Holyrood election the year after. There are some people in the movement who think it's kind of on the never never and they're and they're frustrated I, of course they're frustrated and they have every right to be frustrated it's a very frustrating situation we are trying to get an independent country and it's an impossible task but it's, it's a task. well it's not impossible it's it's <laughs> it seems impossible i think it's possible sorry i should that was a <laughs> wrong phrase of mine uh, no i think it's possible but it seems overwhelming mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. and i think that the I think Nicola's the right person. She's done a great job, and I think her canniness is what will actually get us there in the end. Okay. But if we went like at a bull in a china shop, we could be very, it could, it could damage us. Okay, so well, we have to be very careful about it, and we have to pursue what we want, what we need, what we feel our country needs. And this is what's interesting about these debates. It's very interesting the way. Kia then sort of said, well, that's the Scottish Labour Party. Mm. And I thought, well, I always thought that was the same party. Mm. And, of course, clearly it, there are different problems that are in Scotland, as in Wales, as in Ireland, mm -hmm. than there are in England. So, mm -hmm. And it's these problems it's that, that are not... Yeah, exactly. More and more and more they're not actually being recognised for mm -hmm. what they are. OK. 